Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go into the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall be afraid? I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help come from the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his troubles. The angels of the Lord encamps all around those who trust in him. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall be afraid. I would have lost confidence had I not believed that I would not see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. In spite of all that's going on in the world right now, with the storms, the wars, everything that's going on, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it. He is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. In Jesus' name, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. I don't know why I just keep thinking. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us, delivers us out of them all. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we shall condemn in Jesus' name. It's so good to be in front of you on this evening one thing about a virtual church is you can have church Sunday through Sunday. We just coming off of our Atlanta Holy Ghost Conference and Revival. So we want to thank each and every one of you for attending, whether it was physically, whether you tuned in live stream. We want to thank you. We love you and we appreciate you for worshiping with us. We had a wonderful time. And again, we just thank you so much for loving on us and for worshiping with us. And we just thank you and we hope that you found something and something was imparted into you. And we hope that you were able to, most of all, receive something from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And just know that we here at Kim BC, we love you. And what's most important here at Kim BC is we want to make sure that you get what you need and that is whatever you need from our lord and savior jesus christ amen amen and amen so before we get into our sermon on today let's go to the lord in prayer dear heavenly father we thank you O oh god on today lord this truly is the day that the lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it O oh god Lord, there is so much going on right now, oh God, in the world, God, with the storms, oh God, with the rumors of wars, oh God, and just so much chaos going on in the world, oh God. But Lord, regardless of what's going on, oh God, Lord, you are the peace in the midst of the storm, oh God. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, I pray that you would be the peace in the midst of the storm, oh God. Lord, I pray that you would give us calm, God, right now in Jesus' name, oh God. Give us the calm that we need, O oh God, in the midst of the storm. We love you, O oh God, and we honor you, O oh God. Lord, I pray right now, O oh God, that you will hide me behind the cross, O oh God, and that I will have nothing to do with this word, O oh God. But I pray, O oh God, that you will hide me behind the cross, God. I pray, God, that self would die right now, O oh God. And I invite your spirit to take control of this sermon, O oh God, in Jesus' name, O oh God. And give the listeners exactly what it is that they need to hear, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, and we honor you, O oh God. And we appreciate you for who you are and for what you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. 
and we declare that it is so. Amen, 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 and amen. As you can see here, Pastor Lowe, I'm very, very tired. And I don't like to say that I am, but I feel like I've been through a war. And I feel like I have been afflicted with so much chaos. But I want to encourage you on today and just know that, see, even leaders, we go through things just like everybody else. But one thing about it is I know that my soul is anchored in the Lord. And I thank him for who he is and for what he's done because I can smile because I know that the earth is the Lord's in the fullness of it. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is El Shaddai and he is Elohim. He is Elion. So I can thank him and I can praise him because of who he is. So I encourage you today that regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what storm you're in, praise him anyhow, because he is still good. He still sits on the throne. So oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together because we will get through it together. And like I said, I've said it before and I'm gonna continuously keep saying it until the Lord release me from having to keep saying it. If we will look at God as the size of a mountain and we will look at our problem as the size of a mustard seed, look at how much that will increase our faith. I know people may get tired of hearing me say it, but I'm gonna keep on saying it until it just manifests in your spirit. Look at God as the size of the mountain and look at your problem as the size of a mustard seed. And just watch how it increases your faith. Amen. So let's go directly into the word. We're going to be reading from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. And also verse 12. Again, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, and verse 12. And if you do not have your Bible, you can go to www.biblegateway.com. Again, www.biblegateway.com. For those of you who do not have your Bible, and I'm going to be reading from the New King James version. And it reads, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse seven, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Verse eight, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Verse nine, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Now I'm gonna drop down to verse 12. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Wow, I'm gonna read verse 12 again. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Hmm. For I know whom I have believed. Hmm. And am persuaded 
that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Wow. Sorry, that kind of touched me a little bit there. So what we're going to talk about today is you are built to last. 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 I want to read that 12 again. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. You are built to last. You are built to last. You are built to last. Have you ever thought about those things? Think about old cars. And you think about those cars you see on the road and you think, how in the world that car been around for so long and that car is still driving? I remember my mom, she had a car, we used to call it Betsy. And that car was around a long time and my mom would say, oh my Betsy, she's still kicking. She was built to last until finally my mom decided to get another car. But we would always call, my mom would always call her Betsy and she would say, oh, Betsy, she's still kicking. But she was built to last. Think about the blood that's in your veins. You have royal blood in your veins. You are a chosen generation a royal priesthood. You are built to last. Think about things that you have around your house. The shirts that you may wear, the jeans that you may wear. And you think, you say, oh my gosh, I can't believe that this is still around. This shirt I can still wear and it hasn't messed up in, or as much as you may wash it. You may wash your jeans or you may wash your shirt and you think as much as I didn't washed it, as much as I didn't ran around and 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 rolled on the ground or whatever the case, whatever it is you've done. And it still hasn't ripped, it still didn't get holes in it. It was built to last. Everything that you have endured in life, you are built to last. I don't care what it is that you have been going through in life. You are built to last. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers you out of them all. I, I, I really like to use myself as an example because so many things that I look at as a 39 year old and a person can look over my life and if I sat down and I told my story to someone and I, I just had the time to tell my story from a child up until 39, like I am today. A person would look at me and say, how is it, as the people would say, you don't look like what you've been through. They would look at me and say, how is it that you've been able to be in your right mind? How is it that you've able to endure all of that and you're still standing because I'm built to last? All that I have endured, God built me this way. He equipped me to endure and withstand all that I've been going through because he's built me to last. Everything that you have been going through and you've been dealing with in your life, you are built to last. Look at verse... Um, seven, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, which we know this is a familiar verse, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Think about if we let go of the fear that's currently gripping us 
from doing exactly what it is that God has called us to do. Think about if we step outside of our comfort zone and we just start doing exactly what it is that God has ordained us to do. You know, I look at myself and I'm gonna use my, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna beat up on, on, on Jackie today. But so many times I hide behind my own insecurities. I can raise my hand and say my own insecurity, my, and those insecurities are, I don't wanna let anyone down. But in the long run, is it that I don't wanna let anyone down or is it that I don't wanna let myself down? But I, like I said in a past sermon before, I said nothing beats a failure but a try. So I keep thinking, what are you afraid of, Jackie? If God is right there beside you, and he said in scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. If I'm going to him and I'm seeking him for everything, how can I fail? If I'm going to him about everything, is he gonna let me fail? If he says to me in his word, if his word says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge me and I'll direct your path. All he wants you to do is trust him. Let's go to the word again. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. We have power, power in the tongue. What are, you, what are you speaking into your future? So right there, when I said the part about my own insecurities, I shouldn't say I have insecurities. I should say, you know what? I am an overcomer. I'm overcoming those insecurities. See, God is talking to me right there. I'm overcoming those insecurities because you know what? In him, there is no failures. Long as I hide behind him, there's nothing that I cannot do because I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. There is nothing in this world that you cannot do. You can do everything because you know what? You are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is nothing in this world that you can do. What is it? What dream has God placed in your heart? What is stopping you from doing what it is that God has placed in your heart to do? Because again, like I said in the message before, you don't know whose miracle you are. There's dreams that I have on the inside that I want to do. But what I've allowed to happen is I've allowed other people to have the remote control. But what you have to do is you have to take, the only person that should have the remote control of your life is God. So those others that have the remote control, take the batteries out. The only person that should have the batteries to the remote control of your life is Christ. Give the batteries back to Christ and allow him to have the remote control of your life. Those others that have the remote control, they should not, no one should have the remote control of your life. You should have the remote control and Christ should have the battery. He should be controlling every step because the steps of a good man and woman are ordered by God. See, I'm going in a whole nother direction in my sermon. Thank you, Apostle Marino. This is meant for someone. You are built for this. You are built for this destiny. You have to, every day that you get up, and this is something that, that I had to do, 
and I had to learn and train myself. Me and <clears throat> Apostle Tasha, we would we, we, we would joke because we would talk about how we would have to change the way that we would talk because I would even tell her, I would have to change some of the things that I would say. And when I would get out of bed, the first thing I would say is, today is gonna be a good day. Even when I would get out of the bed and I wouldn't feel like it, today is gonna be an awesome day. I, I even shared at the revival that I would never say, I have diabetes. I would always say, I deal with diabetes. Because whatever you say after I am, you're inviting into your space. So with that, I deal with some insecurities. I don't have insecurities. So those insecurities I deal with, God is going to help me trump those, because we all, no, no one can say that they don't deal with some type, some form of insecurities. But God is going to help you trump over those insecurities. Whatever they may be. But it's called looking within yourself and saying, God, Lord, help me. Because I'm built to last. I'm built to deal with whatever it is that may come my way. I'm built to deal with whatever it is because we can go here. Let's look at verse eight. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. In other words, whatever you're suffering, whatever you're enduring. Because I know, I don't know, it, I think sometimes we get embarrassed when we're suffering. Because sometimes it can feel like you're out there on your own and it, it looks like everyone else's life is going good and you, it may feel like you're just out there on your own and it seems like you're the only one suffering. But you know what? Rejoice when you're suffering. I, I honestly had to get to that place to say, you know what? Count it all joy when you fall in various trials. Long as you're not going through and you're not dealing with something because of something you did, but rejoice when you fall in various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith. So you have a reason because remember in the end, you're built to last. You're shattered, but you're not broken. You are built to last. And you're going to make it. Because in him, there is no failure. In him, there is no failure. You're gonna make it. Go back to that visual board. Write the vision and make it plain. Don't give up on whatever it is, whatever dream you have. Don't give up on that dream. Just like I tell the leaders with Kim C. Don't ever let anyone take your voice from you. Whatever that voice on the inside, which is Jesus Christ. As you can see on my shirt, this side, where it says the voice within. I allowed, I allowed, I take full responsibility, I allowed people to take my voice from me. but I had to learn to take my voice back. And I encourage you to take your voice back and say to yourself, I am somebody within the body of Christ. I hear the voice within. The voice within is Jesus Christ and no one can take that voice from me. God has given each and every one of us a voice. We all have the voice within. And he's given each and every one of us a gift. And that gift is a voice. Use that voice. Use it 
to do something to bless others. Now everyone think when they think of a voice, they think of someone singing. They think of going out, you know, and you think when you think of the voice, you think of, I'm not talking about the show, the voice. I'm not talking about, you know, they think of getting on the, on the stage. They think of singing. Or, no. God has gifted us with a voice. Your voice is powerful. And I'm not talking about using your voice to tear other, other people down. I'm talking about using that God-given voice. See, I get choked up. Use that voice to build each other up. Not tear each other down, build each other up. Help one another. See, it's challenging for me to be in an environment when I see people tearing each other down. Because see, instantly the Lord has me where I'm so in tune now because I know my ministry. I know where God leads me, where I can see when someone is using their voice to tear people down and not build people up. And me and Apostle Tasha would talk about it all the time, how it is, I, I, can, I see it. I know when people are tearing people down with their voice, but it's because of something that they're dealing with on the inside. But if we will use our voices to lift each other up, because that voice within is Jesus Christ, and he's not going to tell you to tear someone down because he's all about love. Because remember, you're built the way he built you is to weather the storms of life. All that you've been, after all that you've been going through, you're built to last. You're built to stand every storm that comes against you in life. Excuse the phone that's ringing, just ignore it. But you are built to last. You are built to endure. You are built to persevere. You have hope. There is hope. Whatever it is that you are going through, whatever it is that you are facing, you are built to last. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Though it may not be today, though it may not be tomorrow, though it may not be next week, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And right before that verse, it says, his anger is but for a moment but his favor is but for a lifetime. His favor is for a lifetime. His anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. Also, I wanna go back to the verse. Look at verse nine. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Before we even knew ourselves. He built us, built this. And he said, you, you, this person, you're built, this person is every story. Before he even formed you, he knew that you were going to endure whatever it is that you were going to endure. And he said, I'm building you. It's okay. I'm building them this way because they're going, they are going to be built to last and to endure every storm, every trial that's going to come their way because they're built to last. I'm building Mother Patricia this way. 
because she is going to be able to endure 11 surgeries because she is going to be built to last. They are not going to take her out. She's built to last. I hope you're following. I hope you're catching what I'm saying. And I hope it's really resonating in your spirit. This is not a, trust me, this is not a heavy sermon. This is, because it's encouraging me. This is an uplifting sermon because it's blessing me. Trust me, because I look at the things that so many of us have been facing. I mean, this is a time where so many of us are being persecuted, are being bullied, being afflicted. But at the end of the day, look who we serve. We serve a mighty God. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You are built to last. You are built to last. Trust him. And again, I'm going to read verse 12 again. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. I used to be ashamed of the things that I suffered. I used to want to hide from the things of my past that I endured. Now, I want to tell my testimony. I love it when people say to me, oh my gosh, you really went through all of that? I love it. Because you know what that tells me? When they say that, and I'm able to come back with, but God. But God. And they're able to look and say, that's a miracle, but God. See, you're thinking of he only did miracles back in the Old Testament days. You think he only did miracles in the New Testament. But when they hear my story and I can say, but God. See, he didn't just do miracles back in the Old Testament. He didn't just do miracles back in the Bible days. He's still doing miracles now. So when they hear my story and I can say, but God, and they can look, that's a miracle. But God, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's still doing miracles. He's still the same God. So again, don't be ashamed. Tell your story because you're somebody's miracle. Amen. And it says, For I know whom I have believed. Who do you believe? Who do you believe today? Who do you believe? I'm not even going to apologize for getting emotional. I know who I believe. And I thank him for who he is in my life. Because he's been good to me. I thank him for every trial that I have endured. I thank him for every person that have backstabbed me. I thank him for every person that have laughed at me. I thank him for every person that have turned their backs on me. I thank him for every single thing. I thank him for at times having zero money in my bank account. I thank him for having no food in my freezer at times. I thank him for everything that he's done for me. Because you know what? He still sits on the throne. So I thank him. That's who I believe in. Because at the end of the day, he is still God. And the earth is the Lord's in the fullness of it. Because you know what? It has increased my faith. Because I know whom I believe. And I know that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I already have. Amen. And am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed. In other words, all that you have done, all that you have committed to him, everything that you have committed to him until that day when we all 
get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that's going to be. In other words, he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Everything that you have committed to God, it's not erased. It doesn't go away. He is able to keep what you have committed unto him. Everything that you've done, every labor, everything that you've done. Now, man, people, people forget what you've done. People erase, may erase what you've done. They may try to erase the good that you've done. It may try to make it seem as if you'd never done anything. They forget how you've helped them, the things that you've done for them. But he is able to keep what you have committed to him until that day. I love what Denzel Washington said. Man gives the award, but God gives the reward. So remember, everything that you have committed unto him, he is able to keep it until that day. So keep on serving him. Keep on rejoicing. Keep on persevering. Because in the end, you shall reap a harvest in due season. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. And remember, you are somebody within the body of Christ. You hear the voice within. And the voice within is Jesus Christ. And no one, and I mean no one, can take that voice away from you. Amen. Now, there may be someone that don't know Jesus Christ. And you may say, I want to know that person who was able to keep everything that is committed. I want to know who that person is. That may be you out there. Well, we want to introduce you to him. And we want to invite you into the family. We consider you family anyway, but we want to invite you to get to know him. We never, ever, ever close a worship service without inviting someone to get to know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. So if that's you, we want to invite you to get to know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All you have to do is pray this simple prayer and we will welcome you into the kingdom of God. And again, you don't have to join Kim VC. We encourage you to go to your local physical church. But if you say, hey, you know what? I can't get there physically. And you want to join Kim VC and worship with us online through the virtual church, inbox us. And we are more than welcome to have you on board with us. But if you say, hey, no, I want to go ahead and go to a physical church. That's awesome as well. All we want you to do is make sure you are connected with a ministry. Amen. So if that is you, please say this prayer after me. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name, I seal this prayer. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of believers in Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ, excuse me. So, again, thank you for worshiping with Kim BC. As a, and again, we love you. And we thank you, as always, for worshiping with us. Again, be blessed. And I look forward to our next time when we come back again. It, it will not be on Monday. It will be on Sunday. But again, that's the best part of a virtual church. We can have worship service any, any, any time. So again, be blessed. Know that I love you. Know that we love you. Know that we're praying for you. And stay encouraged. And to those that are in on the 
I should say the South, know that we're praying for you. Those in Houston and in Texas, all the state of Texas, know that we're praying for you. We've been praying for you. Know that we love you. Those in Florida, Georgia, all up the South Coast, we're praying for you. Know that we love you and we sincerely are praying for you. We've been praying for you. So be safe and please reach out to us uh, if you need anything. Just please know that we're praying for you and not just saying that we're praying for you. We really are praying for you. And please reach out to us and let us know how you're doing. Know that we love you. And I'm going to close out in prayer just to make sure that we're praying for those that are in uh, the midst of that, of that storm. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you for this word, O oh God. We pray, God, that it will encourage someone, God, to know, God, that they are built God that they are built to last God not just built God but built to last God in whatever it is that they're going through oh God Lord we pray oh God a special prayer oh God for those God that have been affected by the storms of oh God in Houston God in the surrounding areas oh God we pray for those God that are being affected by the storms in Florida oh God in Georgia and all up the south uh, coast, oh God. Lord, we pray for them, oh God. We pray that you would cover them, oh God. Protect them, oh God. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you would just wrap your arms around them, oh God, and keep them safe, oh God, and keep them in perfect peace, oh God, in Jesus' name, oh God. Lord, we just pray that you would wrap your arms around them, oh God, and we send a special prayer, God, as well to our Kim BC family that's right there, oh God, in Atlanta, Georgia, oh God, we pray that you will cover them and protect them and keep them safe, oh God. And Lord, we just pray, God, that you would just cover everyone, oh God, that's in the eye of the storm, oh God. We pray that you would just keep them safe, oh God, protect them, oh God, their families and their homes, oh God. Just please, God, even those people, God, that are in the Caribbean, oh God, we pray for them, oh God. We pray that you will protect them, oh God, our followers in the Caribbean, God. Please, God, protect them, love on them, oh God, and just please, God, wrap your arms around them, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, oh God. We love you, oh God, and we thank you, oh God, in advance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We love you, and we thank you, and we will talk to you all soon. Be blessed.
and bursting forth in glorious day. 